Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I guess I'll see you at some point. I'm going to log in actually. I'll usually log in, but on YouTube actually. I think YouTube, you can't see me. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Dhanu Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for joining the call. So today Guru Maharaj will continue to enlighten us on the past tense on a Ramayanam series. Hare Krishna. I'll turn it over to you, Guru Maharaj. Oh, Hare Krishna. Yeah, before we start, uh, Srimati, are you there? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisance. It's all good to share, Prabhupada. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, uh, so I won't be able to give class tomorrow. As the, the day is the day is completely full with temple activities. Um, do you have someone to? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, uh, Sri Devi Mataji is there to give class. It has to be on Ram Leela. It's not just any old class. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I'll tell her uh, to prepare for that. Okay. All right. Did you try okay. for Did you try for Bhuta Bhavana? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj. Today I'll try. Yeah, I mean for a class like that, Bhuta Bhavana. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand. Yeah. Idea, yeah. Sure, I'll try, Guru Maharaj. Today I'll try. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Omagyan timidandasya ganajana salakaya chaksun militam yena tas my shri gurudeva maha ma om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri mati bhakti vedanta swami niti namine namaste saraswati teve gaudavani pacharine nirvishesha sunyavadi pasyat yate sitaine Vancha Kalpataru Vesja Kripa Sindhu, Deva Chapatitana, Mpavane Gyo, Vaishnave Gyo, Namahana Maha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Shiva Sadi Gaur, Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Ramari Murti Sukalani, Amena Kishtan. Nana Vatara Akarobu Venesi Kinchu Krishna Swayam Samabhavat Paramam Pavanyo. Go Vindamari Purusham. Tamaham Vijami. Angani Yasya Sakalansri Abriti Manti Pasyanti Panti Kalayans and Jiram Jaganti. Ananda Chinmaya Sar Ujwala Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Jami. So, uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead expands himself into various expansions of himself. One of the most powerful and immediate expansion of the Supreme Lord is Sri Ramchandra. The appearance of Ramchandra occurred more than two million years ago in the Treta Yuga in the 24th millennium. <laughs> and uh, this particular uh, manifestation of the Lord had different reasons for the appearance of the Lord. We won't speak so much about the appearance of the Lord because that will actually... <laughs> manifest itself to, in tomorrow's class. Therefore, we don't want to, uh, we want to keep the schedule as far as the titi for talking about the Lord's appearance. But we can say that the Lord appeared for at least three or four different reasons. One, in this particular case, he appeared 
in order to rid the world of the demon who had come known as uh, Ravana and all of his followers who were harassing the, the pious people around. The second reason, and another reason that was given is that in order to satisfy his internal consorts, desire to be alone with him, Sita Devi, he performed this particular pastime that is also mentioned as one of the reasons for the Lord's appearance. Also to, of course, in killing the demons, he also engaged the demigods who came as what is known as varners. Varners were, they were half celestial and half human. Um, or now so they also had characteristics of monkeys, but they were actually powerful demigods or energies of the various demigods who appeared to assist the Lord in his pastimes on earth. When the Lord comes, he always brings his entourage. And in this case, he created an entourage of <clears throat> Monkeys, monkey actually, not, they were actually not monkeys. That's not a real way to describe them. They were actually devas who took on various forms. The original devas combined with she monkeys and also from female yakshas. Also, they combined with Gandharvas and Vidyadharas and other female demigoddesses to produce this race of varnas and there were there were more than 10 million of them which came to associate, associate with and assist the lord in his pastimes so there wasn't a small group it was more than 10 million of these powerful personalities I like to mention one particular aspect. This is the prelude to the Lord's appearance. The city of Ayodhya was created by Vibhishwata Manu. It was practically on the level of a demigod's city. It was opulent in all respect. Uh, in geographical measurement, it was 96 miles in one direction and 24 miles in the other direction. It was quite a, a huge city, 96 square miles and 24 square miles. And there were millions and millions of inhabitants in the city of Ayodhya. Ayodhya's opulence was amazing. Parks, lanes, which were guarded by uh, various types of sentries and soldiers who were very powerful who could fight with more than more than ten men at one time. Uh, the city was perfumed by elephants who would exude various types of sweet fragrances all over the city, and uh, the water in the city was as tasty as sugarcane juice, which would be drunk by the citizens and also used to fertilize the, the mango groves. And there were palaces and various types of abodes. And in that city, everyone was pious. There was not no sinful activity. The four varnas were there, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra. And the four varnas worked, worked in a completely cooperative way in order to carry on the affairs of the city. Um, there were uh, many, uh, what we say, assembly houses where people could assemble for various types of discussions and meetings. Uh, it was opulent in all respects. There was mango groves and, and various types of flower groves. There were parks, there were roadways, there were even coconut trees and uh, mango trees and so many. It was just 
practically on the level of the demigods. And the king of Ayodhya was Dasarat. Dasarat, he had re received a name, Dasa Rata. Dasa means 10 and Rata means chariot. And that when he would fight, it seemed like his chariot would go in 10 directions at the same time. And it also had a secondary meaning that he could fight with 10 chariot tears at the same time and be victorious. So Dasarat was the king of the city. And he had three principal queens whose name was Kosalya, Sumitra, and Kaikeyi. And they were loyal and very highly qualified ladies in all respects. Um, there was nothing lacking in opulence in the city of uh, Ayodhya. In fact, even the demigods and the demigoddesses would fly over the city and they would shower flowers and uh, onto, the, onto the residents of the city from above. So the opulence was, and the quality of the citizen was on the highest level. Everything was perfect, but there was only one thing that would appear to be lacking. Dasarat, the king, didn't have any issue none of his queens were able to produce a son or any progeny. In fact, he did have one girl. Um, her name was Shanta. Uh, he had one, but as a king, he needed a son because and he was getting old and he wanted to retire, and the, which was his duty after a certain amount of years ruling the kingdom and also now his age was quite elderly and he was thinking what am I going to do and so he was overcome with a very strong sense of despondency and he was in lamentation so everything was okay except that one thing that there was no son his daughter Shanta he gave it to a neighboring king who was his friend called Ramapad, who was in a neighboring kingdom. And Shanta lived there because Ramapad also didn't have any issue. In order to please his friend Ramapad, he sent his daughter Shanta to assist him in his kingdom. So Dasarat was overwhelmed. So he was thinking, what am I going to do? And so he decided, let me perform an Asvamedha Yagya, a horse sacrifice. Now, in order to do that, it takes a lot of wealth and it also expands itself over at least a year time before one can actually perform this Yagya. It takes a year of at least just to prepare for the Yagya. And what that does is that he sends what is called the victory horse, along with a, an, uh, an entourage of soldiers out to the different kingdoms around the world. And each king would meet the horse, the hor there would be a horse, a challenge horse. Now, if the king was uh, submissive to the rule of Dasara or the king of Ayodhya, then he would simply acknowledge, and then the soldiers along with the horse would continue on. If the king wasn't, then he would try to capture the horse and there would be a fight. And if the king lost, then he would have to become automatically the servant of Dasarat. If he won, he could remain independent. <clears throat> And so the horse went all around the world. And this takes at least a year for the horse to circular the world. And guided by these centuries, these, this, the division of military soldiers that would follow the horse and be ready to fight the neighboring king if he decided to capture the horse. Now, after one year, the horse returned 
And then there was no one challenged the horse, so there was complete sovereignty all over the world. Dasarat was understood to be the king of the entire world. But he had to perform this sacrifice in order to establish his supremacy. So once the horse comes back, and then there is a sacrifice performed. And just before the sacrifice performed, uh, yes, actually, it, the sacrifice was about to perform. Now we'll go and we'll, we'll do a flashback that um, at one point in the kingdom of Brahmapad, there was a tremendous drought and it hadn't rained for months. And Romapad was very much anxious about that. It was therefore, but without the rain, they couldn't produce agriculture. And therefore there was some scarcity. And of course, without rainfall, there was a lot of uh, scarcity in different areas. So um, Romapad was in anxiety. Now, nearby the kingdom of Romapad, living in the forest, there was a, there was a, a, a sage called uh, Kabanda. Uh, I think his name was, uh, I can't remember his name was. Uh, Kandan, Kandan, uh, Kandanka. Anyway, I'll get the name later. And he had a son who was quite unusual. The son was born in a, and he had horns on his head, but he was a boy and he had these two horns on his head. He gave him the name Marisha Shringa, which indicates his horns on his head. Uh, and uh, he was concerned that his son stayed brahmachari throughout his whole life. So he protected his son and he didn't allow him to go out. If the boy needed anything, his father would go out and bring it to him. And the boy stayed in the hermitage back as he was growing up. And so now he's a teenager. He's never saw another person except his father. That's the only person he ever saw. His mother had died long ago. And so now he was uh, living as a hermit, as a recluse and his father was taking care of him. And so, um, and this was going on for some time. Now this drought with Romapad was becoming more and more severe and Romapad was trying to get some advice from his ministers, what to do. And they gave him advice. They said, in the forest, there is one sage, his name is Rishishringa. He is very powerful. And he's performing much austerity. He's never been outside of the forest. He's never been in the company of anyone except his father. So you have to bring him to the kingdom, somehow arrange for him to marry your daughter Shanta, who was formerly the daughter of um, um, Dasara, and together they can perform sacrifice. And as soon as you bring Rishishringa here, he will perform sacrifice. And then rains will again appear. So there was some plot to bring Rishishringa. Obviously his father would never agree to that. He wanted him to stay in the forest and remain brahmachari his whole life. So one day when his father was out gathering food, uh, Romapad 
with the advice and arrangements of his ministers, found these three girls, young, beautiful society girls. They were young. And he, they gave him baskets of sweets and various other kinds of edibles. And they said, you find this Rusha Shringa and you give him these sweets and you somehow allure him out of the forest and bring him here. And so these girls went and they somehow happened to arrive just when his father was no longer present. And there's the boy all alone. So they came. Now, Rishi Shringa had never saw anyone in his life except his father. So he didn't really know what the female species was. So when he saw these three people approaching, he was kind of amazed, who are they? And he said, he said, I never saw, I never saw men like that before. They look so attractive. And of course, their bodily fragrance also was very much uh, perfumed in such a way to attract his mind. And so they started to speak to him and they started to feed him various kinds of sweets and other nice edibles. And his mind started to change. And then he became somewhat attracted to them. But then his father was about to return and the three girls disappeared. Now his father came back and he saw his son was not the same son that he had. His mind was disturbed. He had been, he had been allured in an attractive way to these girls. And now he was thinking, I have to meet them again. <laughs> but that wouldn't allow, that would, his father would never allow that. He never told his father what actually happened, but his father could sense something was wrong. After some time, when his father went away again, he took the opportunity with that desire to meet these girls again, to leave the forest, and he followed the trail which led back to the kingdom of Romapod. When he got there, uh, he was greeted by the citizens of Romapod, and then Romapod met him and presented his daughter for marriage to Rishi Shringa, who immediately agreed. And then they performed a sacrifice, and then by that sacrifice, rains came again because of the austerity that Rishi Shringa had done. When one performs austerity, one becomes powerful. Austerity is not bhakti. Bhakti is loving God. Sometimes we see devotees are very expert at performing austerity. Austerity has to be done in such a way that it leads one to detachment from material life and brings one to devotional service or helps one to execute devotional service free from the encumbrances of material activities and material desires. But there are those who perform austerities for material reasons and become very much successful in fulfilling their material desires. And in many cases, they become very, very powerful. They become influential. And they also can use those that influence to establish themselves in different ways. So, but in spiritual life, austerity brings one closer to Krishna. But we could also perform material austerities in spiritual life. And those things just turn, make one hard hearted. In other words, they don't lead to bhakti. Just like say excessive amounts of fasting just to prove that you can become very renounced in the eating process. <clears throat> That's not, we, therefore we have regulated times for fasting such as the Ekadasi days and on the appearance days of the Lord and the pure devotees, we fast accordingly. <clears throat> so those are recommended and necessary austerities and they also purify 
the mind and body, and they help to lead one to execution of devotional service. So those austerities are, are not recommended, they're required austerities. The four regulative principles, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating and no gambling. They are considered principles of knowledge, principles of detachment, but ultimately principles of austerity. So we must follow them. Otherwise, we won't be able to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And if we can't chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra properly with devotion and attachment, we can't make progress in devotional service. Our chanting will be offensive. So one must follow the recommended austerities and avoid creating austerities that are contrary to one's practice of devotional service. So we will we see in this case, because uh, Rishi Shringa was very austere, he had remained celibate his whole life practically up until the time when he received marriage from Shanta. And he lived in such a way that, uh, you know, he never performed any kind of material activity. He was simply doing his prayers and meditation in the forest under the guidance of his father, who was actually a, a sage. But um, now he's in that, and so when he came, uh, the, the ministers of Gomapad engaged him in various kinds of pujas. And when he performed those sacrifices, those worships, rains came. So now, going back to the kingdom of Ayodhya, Dasarat is, you know, performing this uh, Asvamedha Yagya. Now the horse returns. And then the horse is tied to a stake, a pole, and his one of his queens called Shaya. She comes with a sword and with three swipes of the sword, she cuts the head of the <coughs> horse. And then the horse is in the body, the fat from the horse is used for entering and then a big fire is performed and then there's a various time, different parts of the horse's body is put into. Of course, the killing of the horse is not the killing of the horse, it's the rejuvenating of the animal. That horse will get a, a better body in its next life. <clears throat> it's not like, it's not just simply killing for the sake of killing, it's it, that sacrifice is meant to bring that soul that's in the horse's body to a higher stage of existence into a human form of life. And then, but during, right or after that ceremony was performed, Sumanta, which was one of the ministers of um, Dasarat said, in order for you to actually have a son, you're gonna have to perform the Putresi Yagya. And the only one who can perform that Putresri Yagya is Rishi Sringa, and he is in the kingdom of Romapad. So call him and then have him perform that Yagya. So on the advice of Sumanta, the arrangement was to bring Shanta and her husband, Rishi Sringa, to Ayodhya. And then very deftly and very expertly, he performed the Putresta Yagya. Now in that Putresta Yagya, a great fire was done. And while the, the, the offerings were made into a fire at one point, out of the fire, a very dark looking personality, very beautiful, very dark looking came out and he had this golden pot in his hand that personality came over to Dasarat and handed him the pot and said, in this pot, there is Havasyana, who there, there is the ingredients for producing children. Sometimes we call it sweet rice. 
So it's a kind of milky beverage. And he said, you take this and you divide it amongst your three queens. And so he did, and he took it and he divided it in half. He gave half to um, Koshalya. And then, then he, the other half, he divided that half and he gave one quarter to Kaikei. And then he gave one eighth to Sumitra. And then he had a one eighth left and he gave that other, he decided to give that other eighth to Sumitra. So out of that, done when he, the, the two queens ingested that sacred sacrifice, they all felt that now they had become pregnant. And in the womb of Koshalya, there was Ram. In the womb of Kaikei, there was Bart. And twins were born, were in the womb of uh, uh, Sumitra, and that was Satrugna uh, and Lakshman. So these were the four children. When, of course, when they were born, they all looked like each other. They were quite resembled each other, but they were manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And sometimes they say extensions of the Lord's weapons, the four weapons, the conch, the lotus, the club, and the disc. Uh, some also say they are the manifestations of the Chaturvyuha, you have Vasudev, uh, Aniruddha, Prajumna, and Sankarsana. <clears throat> so this is the prelude to the birth of these personalities who later became the sons and uh, obviously the, the subject matter of the entire Ramayana. And of course, uh, there's much more to this particular lead up pastime, but this is the essence. Of course, when Dasarat understood that the queens were pregnant, he became joyful. And upon the birth of all of these four, they all took birth simultaneously. Uh, there was a huge festival throughout the city. Dasarat was in utmost joy and happiness his whole life he felt now has become successful he has an heir to the throne he can retire from his position and not only does he have an heir to the throne but he has the most qualified one <clears throat> and so now you know then we know that leads to so many other different Leelas that surround the Lord's growing up. The Ramayan consists of seven khandas. And this is the first one, the appearance of the Lord, or the prelude to the appearance of the Lord, even before the Lord's appearance. Yeah. Um, uh, and Valmiki's Ramayan has 24,000 verses. Uh, that's a beautiful story on how Valmiki actually was a hunter and he was hunting in the forest. And then, of course, um, how he um, not only was he a hunter, but he was quite of a Dak White at the same time. Uh, he was not, he was person personified non grata. And we'll tell that story at a later time, how Valmiki, actually we can tell some of it right now. I will need to look at my notes to see some of the details in order to give justice to this particular story here.
He became Valmiki. He was actually a hunter named Ratnakar. And he came in contact with Narada Muni. Narada Muni travels around giving the mercy. So somehow he came in contact with Narada Muni. And seeing this great sage, he offered his respects to Narada Muni. Narada Muni wanted to somehow rather inspire him in devotional life. So he asked him to chant the names of Rama. But Ratnakar could not do it because of his sinful life. He wasn't, the name of Ram would not come from his lips. So it's described that Narada Muni being very intelligent knows how to bring about the results in a different way. So he told them, you chant the name Mara, Mara, Mara. Mara is the God of death. And so that was easy for him because he was always surrounded by death. So he started chanting Mara, 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 Mara. And after some time when he was chanting the name Mara, actually it was M-A-R-A, -A, actually started to reformulate into the name of Rama, Rama, Rama. And then he was chanting the names of Ram. And after a while, he actually became purified. And then later on, of course, he wrote the, Rama, the Ramayan. <clears throat> One time he was, uh, and it's described there was some birds, particular type of birds. I'm not sure what kind of birds they were. And um, this cruel hunter, Ratnakar, he, he um, shot one of the birds and he killed the bird. And uh, hmm. trying to think of the how this sequence goes. Um, yeah, he heard a particular mantra. It was chanted, and uh, right at the time of the death of the bird. I'm not going to try to tell it because I don't have all the details, but it's a very interesting story and in how he heard this particular melody and it, could, it stuck in his mind. And then later on, Lord Brahma came to him and told him, your service is to write about the Supreme Personality of God. This is after he had met Narada Muni. And using that same meter that he heard, he ex actually composed the Ramayan from that meter that he heard from this particular mantra. <clears throat> and that became the foundation for the verses in the Ramayana. That's a wonderful story. I'm not able to remember all of the details at this point. Okay, so um, we can stop here. And if you'd like to ask anything in relationship to the Ramayana, it doesn't have to be related to what I spoke to them, but something about Lord Ram or about the Ramayana. So we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Thank you for explaining uh, uh, so nicely about the reasons, appearance of the Lord and uh, Ayodhya's opulence and uh, Rishi Shinka's past tense was so good, so enlightening to us. And birth of the prelude personalities, that was so good and explaining us about the past tense of uh, <clears throat> Valmiki. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful class again. Okay.
uh, dear devotees, uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, or realizations, uh, please you can unmute or you can type in the chat box. Uh, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. I'm checking if any questions. Anything on the Ramayan or about any of the personalities in the Ramayan? Uh, I see one hand raised. Uh, well, Sri Devi Mataji. Uh, Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Lord Ram. Thank you for uh, again giving us a wonderful narration of the times. Guru Maharaj, when this uh, sacrifice is performed and that personality appears with that payasam, Please tell us how some part of that Paisam went to, I think, Anjani, mother of Hanuman, and how Hanuman was born. That would be very nice. Yeah, there is a story where one eagle flew over and grabbed a portion of that Paisam, said them, and he, and he carried it to that area of Kishkinda, where Anjani was, at that time, I believe she was pregnant. And then he dropped that, as you say, Paisan. And that was, uh, I don't know how it was received by Anjana, I'm not sure, but somehow she received it and that was uh, Hanuman. But then other people say, of course, Hanuman's appearance in the world and appearance in the pastimes of the Lord is quite variegated yeah. and so he appears in different ways during different manifestations of this these leelas yeah. so that's one way that was described there he also came but then again he is also said that he's also the son of the wind god by you and he's also Keshari Putra, son of Keshari and Anjana. He's also an energy of Lord Shiva, coming from the semen of Lord Shiva during the Mohini Murti pastime. So that's so that's all of all of that is many of the different ways that Hanuman appears in the world. So you're we're mentioning this one particular way here. So he appears in different ways during different millenniums. He's a Chiranjivan. Chiranjivan means one who doesn't die. Hanuman is now, he's still somewhere on the earth planet. He's there. So there are 12 Chiranjivans persons who are on the earth planet that uh, they have what we say, it says they don't die. They just continue to perform their pastimes. They may leave the earth planet and go to another realm, but they are uh, eternally manifested in that particular body they have and they perform that Leela. <clears throat> They may also change bodies, just like Asvatama was a chira, chira on Jivan also. But he, uh, he uh, later on became something else. <clears throat> but Vyasadev's chira on Jivan, and there's others too. I believe Narada Muni is Chiranjivan. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Um, Namrata Mataji has a question. Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, I, I was uh, thinking the uh, the 
the milk uh, offering which was uh, from the yagna was divided in unequal parts for the queens why was that the queens were given different quantities of uh, <laughs> this is this is this was this is the lord's arrangement that's all okay yeah to manifest themselves accordingly one part half for koshaya one eight, one quarter for kaikeyi and Ultimately, one quarter for Sumitra. Yeah, well, you might say that he gave. <laughs> it seems like Koshaya was the principal queen, although Kaikeyi was the favorite queen. <clears throat> so I don't know how you could evaluate, but I think it's all higher arrangements that these children were born accordingly. Like that. Two, one, and one. Like that. And the half, the half went to to Koshalia, and she was ultimately giving birth to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his form as Ramchandra. And the others were more manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but in a, in a lesser potent role, such as Lakshman, he became the servant of Ram. Everyone saw Ram as the, as the best of all and the most qualified and he was because Ramadi Morti Shukala Nima Neva Tishta and he's actually an incarnation of you know Lord Vishnu himself directly the others are also manifestations of them just like you have the Chaturvyuha you have Vasudev Shankar Aniruddha and Pradyumna but we understand that, you know, Sankarshana is like Lakshman. Uh, and uh, Vasudev is like Lord Ramachandra. So according to the different hierarchy within the spiritual realm, you have different, you know, manifestations of the Godhead. They're all equal, but they exhibit more or less of the potency of the Godhead. So Ram was the supreme manifestation of Vishnu. Others were Vishnu in manifestations too, but with lesser potency. Or the exhibition of lesser potency, not with lesser potency. And that, you know, all of Krishna's incarnations are equally powerful, but what they exhibit according to the leelas they perform is according to the need and not usually not more. <clears throat> so you see, Lakshman became the servant of Ram, Satrugna became the servant of Bart. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. And that's only, but ultimately it's by higher arrangement. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, I got that. Okay, no problem. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mataji. Nice question. Uh, I see Vraja Mandala Prabhuji. Um, please go ahead. Uh, raise your hand. Uh, Hare Krishna. Um, my video is off, so please forgive me uh, as I am driving. Um, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my sincere, humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your lotus feet. Um, Guru Maharaj, I just, um, uh, my mother used to give class, Ramayan class. Uh, he used to give it, she used to give it quite often. And throughout the years, I used to just listen and, and, and pay attention. And just, I thought I'll just add to it that, um, there was a, a really nice story she used to mention, and uh, 
an intimate story. And she, she, she used to say, do you know why squirrels have a certain marking on their back? And the reason behind that was when uh, Hanuman and the monkey warriors were building the bridge from India to Lanka, uh, which in English terms called Ram Setu Bridge, uh, the reason why they have that special marking is one time there was uh, the bridge was being built and Lord Ram was sitting there and he was watching the bridge being built and there was a small squirrel that came and she used to jump into the the sea and back onto the rock and she's the Take herself, Lord Ram asked, my dear squirrel, what are you doing? And the squirrel looked up Lord Ram and said, my Lord, look at the body I have. I can't do anything. The warriors are so strong and they can throw all these boulders and make the bridge, but I don't have that type of body, but mm. what I can do. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, your voice is a little bit low. Can you please a little bit speak louder? It's, it's going up it's, and down. It's up, yeah, it's going up and down. Hare Krishna. He's driving, and because he's driving, he's going in different areas. So yeah. it's affecting the internet. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Prabhuji got uh, disconnected. Yeah. If you're driving, it can always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so should we uh, wait or, or should we take up other questions, Kurmaj? Uh, meantime, uh, Prabhuji can join. Yeah, let's go on for now. Yes, yes, yeah. Devotees, any more questions? Uh, uh, his, his, his microphone is back on again now. So. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, Prabhuji, we can hear you now. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry, sorry about that. My connection dropped. I just dropped out um where was i so yes this squirrel jumps into the the sea and jumps back onto the rocks and shakes his body so lord ram was asking why are you doing this what are you doing and and, and so she explains herself that i don't have this type of body my lord and i just there's nothing i can do but what i can do for you is i can wash the rocks so when your lotus feet touches the rocks it, it, the, the rocks are nicely washed for you so Lord Ram was so pleased that he stroked her and gave her a special marking. And you will see that squirrels in India, especially that region, have a special, special marking on their backs. And we still see that special squirrel in, in, in India today. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the, Lord is, I, the, Lord, the Lord's very appreciative even of the most insignificant service. Yeah, it is such a such a lovely story, and um, how sweet that she was able to give some service to the Lord, and she was blessed by a special marking which she still has today. Is all squirrels have those markings? This particular squirrel in India, yes, that marking is there today. But not all the squirrels around the world, though. So. No, no, because uh, different squirrels have different types of bodies. Some are really small, some are big, some fly and so on. But this particular squirrel uh, has a special mark and you can see it's a really nice marking from uh, her head all the way down to the tip of her tail. Interesting. Yeah. The Lord is grateful. <laughs> Indeed. These girls have something to be proud of. <laughs> special marking. Received the special mercy of the Lord. A wonderful story. My mother's very learned when it comes to the Ramayana, Guru Maharaj. She still she, does it today. She still gives class today. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. They, I was just going to say. She just gave class two days ago at the manor. Did she speak that squirrel story again? I don't think so. I don't think it was this time around, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> she, she knows it in really, really good detail, Guru Maharaj, like really good detail. 
<laughs> yeah. She, yeah, she's been studying the Ramayana since she was a very, very young child, and she still studies it today. Nice. Yeah, I was with your mother last night at the program and home program. Yeah, she, she, she mentioned she was going to see you. She was actually at my place and then she said, I need to go, I need to see Guru Maharaj. Uh, I, was, I was aware she was coming. Good, good. Yeah, we're, we're gearing up with, here in London as Harinams going on Later on today, there's a three-hour kirtan at the temple tonight. Those of you who are in London, it's three-hour kirtan starting at six from nine o'clock. And then tomorrow, all from morning program all the way up until mid-afternoon, there's programs here centered around the Ramayan. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank Come. You. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I most certainly will be coming tomorrow. And yeah. um, I, I hope to see you soon, very, very soon. I, uh, I sent you an email yesterday, I believe, yeah. And uh, see if I can uh, see you soon. Okay. Yeah, good. Thank you, Raj Mother. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. That's very nice to hear. Um, I don't see any questions, Kurmaj. Uh, dear devotees, any questions? Comment. Comments. Mm -hmm. Comments. Um, yeah, I see Sukahava Mataji. Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All the to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for the very nice story about the Ramayan. Uh, I have, you know, this question actually I had for a long time regarding uh, Sita Mata and Draupadi. So in Mahabharat, the most the person who suffered the most was Draupadi and in Rama and the person who suffered the most was Sita Mata. So why always Hades? Well, Ram suffered a lot too. <laughs> he suffered yeah, separation yeah. from Sita. Yeah, but like, you know, uh, all the time living in Ravan's palace was not Good for her, and uh, after that, also Ram has Ram said, Okay, you can't stay with me now anymore. So, Sita Mata, although she was pregnant, she has to live in the forest. Well, that story I'll tell tomorrow. The real, the real, the, re the reason why that happened. It's okay. a very, it's a very Gupta story, All right, okay. but um, the material world. The Lord performs his pastimes. But in the goddess of fortune, she's the goddess of fortune. She's the supreme goddess of fortune. She's not a small personality. What was her separate her suffering was their separation from Ram. That was the essence or the height of her suffering. But there's no question of separation and separation is can never, the Lord can never be separated from his energy. It's like the sun can never be separated. The sunshine can never be separated from the sun. Your sunshine might come into your room and, you, and the sun is in a different place, but still there's no separation. It may look like there's separation but it's just an, an experience of separation, but the separation can never happen. This is all Leela. Mm -hmm. Leela, in order to increase the loving mood and to teach that um, I mean, what what did Sita teach? She taught 
you know, allegiance to her husband, despite even the, the threat of her own, you know, she was going to be killed. But she didn't care as long as and she always remained chaste and faithful. So she's teaching what is a faithful wife. That despite whatever happens, she remains loyal to the husband. And so in this case, it's the goddess of fortune and the supreme personality of Godhead. So there is many lessons, and just like Sisu, Sita gets infatuated by this mystical deer, which was an in, a manifestation of the of Maricha, who was meant to attract her away, attract Ram away from her, so Ravana could capture her. So it seems like she's acting as an ordinary person in this situation. But she's also teaching how attachment to material things causes so many problems, <laughs> especially attachment to wealth. Because she's this deer was quite beautiful. It was decorated with all kinds of golden ornaments and and there were emeralds and it was mystical. And Sita wanted that deer. And therefore, Ram, in order to satisfy his wife, because it says it's the duty of a husband to satisfy the wife, he went after. And that led to her being captured by Ravana. So it shows how, and her uh, disrespecting and offending Lakshman all of the, how could the goddess of fortune act in, in such a materialistic way? Mm -hmm. She can't, but she's put into that circumstance in order to play out this particular Leela and at the same time teach the conditioned souls that even I, the goddess of fortune, who gives fortune to everyone, is chasing after material fortune. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so many things are like in Rama and you can question because although Ram is this Lord Ram was supreme personality of Godhead, but then he, uh, where was Sita Mata kept? He could not find out. Like, you know, he has to take help of Hanuman and Sugri. It could be Leela, but then it feels... It is. It's Leela for sure. Mm. But he wants to kill the demons, and so that's there too. I mean, Ram could have took help from Bali. Bali was powerful. Bali at one time even captured Ravana and tied him up. So Bali would have assisted Ram in finding Sita, but could, but uh, the Lord didn't use Bali because that would have that would have minimized the Lord's glory to take help from someone like Vali to do the work that he came to do, actually. So you have to really hear the, uh, the uh, commentaries by the Acharyas in all of these different leelas in order to get a clear understanding of what has actually happened, because things happen on two levels. They happen on the immediate level, which is what we see, and we can learn from certain principles and certain values. But we also understand that on the higher level, this, the Lord's Leela is being played out in a certain way. Just like Lord Chaitanya, he can make the whole world Krishna conscious right now if he wants to. But that's not his plan. He wants his devotees to do it. So the devotees become purified and the devotees get the credit. And many uh, millions of other people will also become purified. The Lord has a way of doing things, using his devotees as his instruments. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you. Will you come tomorrow for Ramayana? Ramayan? Uh, in the, later on, Guru Maharaj, I won't be able to come in the morning because I've got uh, a reading of uh, Lamanjari Mataji's program in the morning, 7 o'clock RT. So I will come later. Yeah. Okay. I was there today morning. <laughs> so Rusha Prabhu there. Who gave, who gave class this morning? Visaska Prabhu. Vis Sorry. Visaska Prabhu. Who the, you know the Prabhuji who does the best book distribution? Vaisheshika. Vaisheshika, huh? Mm -hmm. It was a really good class, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a great preacher. He's lovely. Yeah. Okay. He gave, he, he, he gave such a, a couple of good uh, points, like, you know, when we do the book distribution, it was, it was really touching. Like, if, you, if you touch somebody's uh, heart, it's so easy to distribute the books. So it's not like we can't force anyone, but we can always touch somebody's heart and make good impression. So it was it was really good point to learn from him. Yeah, that's the way to a person's confidence. He's amazing. Yeah, he is very powerful. Very mm -hmm. powerful preacher, and he's done book distribution for more than I don't know forty years, maybe close to forty years. Yeah. Yes, there was a there was a video viral uh, recently about uh, him taking a lighter for in in the return of the book of Bhagavad Gita. Have you seen that, Guru Maharaj? It's so good. No, no, and it was a really good one, you know. So he, when uh, Prabhuji was distributing book, one he, he came up to one person. See, uh, uh, and to started talking to him and the person was smoker. So he said, um, I don't want book. First of all, he said, I don't want book. And then after a while, when Mrs. Kaprabhu was talking to him, he said, okay, if um, give me, but he just wanted to get rid of him. So he said, yeah, okay, give me, but I don't have anything to give you. So Prabhuji saw that he, he was smoker. So he said, uh, you must have got something you can give it to me. And uh, he said, I only have got this lighter and a cigarette. I don't have anything else. So Prabhu said, oh, I can't have a cigarette, but I can have a lighter. So he takes a lighter from him and uh, gives him Bhagavad Gita. And then after, after he takes away the lighter, then that person realizes, oh my God, he took my lighter. How am I going to smoke now? <laughs> so he said, no, give me my lighter back. And Prabhupada said, no, no, no. Now this lighter you have exchanged in return of the book because I can't give you a book on, uh, on its own. You need to give me something. And then um, that person said, okay, fine. And then he leaves. And the Prabhuji, after a while, he shows that the uh, lighter he's using to light the lamp to Krishna. So in, in a way, that person was getting mercy of Krishna by giving his lighter and lighting the lamp for Krishna. So you saw that you can take anything, like you can get anything, you can use it in service of Krishna. <laughs> Pretty good. That's, Very that's... good. It was a, it was a good, good video. It was so, it was viral all the time in the YouTube. That's good yeah. yeah. Very, he's so compassionate. He cares for each and every soul so so much. So much mercy. So much mercy. Jai Ho. <laughs> <laughs> good. And you are also a mercy manifestation because you make everybody happy. <laughs> Ramaraj, I need your mercy. I'm, you, you told me, I'm, I'm just following your instruction that I should, I should, I will leave up to my name, don't I? Well, it fits. Now you just have to spread it and make it even more effective. 
Sukhavaha means one who gives happiness to others. That's what it means. Yes, Guru Maharaj. A few more years. A few more years and I'll be off. Then you can give more happiness. <laughs> yep, <laughs> definitely. That's that's the plan, actually. I'll join Sri Mati Mat <laughs> no, no, Sri uh, Devi Mataji in my yeah. plan. No, we stay and you stay in London and make Londonites happy because they need it. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm trying, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Sri Devi, she, she's happy enough. She doesn't need any more happiness. See, she's, you can see, just look at her, see how happy she is. <laughs> I'm happy at the thought of Sukhava coming, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> yeah, she's very happy. Yeah, Sri Devi Mataji is always happy. <laughs> no, I'm happy now. I've been cribbing for 20 years. Poor Guru Maharaj knows all about it. I'm happy now, not before. I'm happy now too, and not before. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm getting letters of complaint now, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Everybody was telling me, why waste your time? I thought, well, maybe something will change. <laughs> Sometimes you see on the sidewalk you see a little you see a little piece of grass growing out amongst the cracks. <laughs> Okay, so should we stop here? Yes, thank you, Mataji. Um, yes, good much. I don't see any questions. Okay, so have a nice and very enjoyable and enthusiastic Ram Nomi. And um, we'll see you on Monday, I believe. I think, I hope, yeah. Yeah, I see, I see I should be able to be available on Monday. But we'll be giving class at, uh, at Soho at 6 o'clock UK time tomorrow night. And at, uh, here in the morning for um, Bhakti Vedanta Manor. So, Guru Maharaj, you're giving uh, tomorrow morning class at the manor, are you? Yeah. I okay. think that's the plan. Hmm. Will you be there afterwards? Well, there's Abby Shake, yeah. Hmm. And then, yeah, there's Kirtan, Abby Shake, and then there's a radio show at 1245. Hmm. There's a boat festival at 1.30, I think. Hmm. And of course, I, somewhere in between there, there's is the Lord's mercy in the form of prashadam being served out. Yeah, it's a wonderful day. You hear these pastimes of the Lord. Okay, thank you. Our basis is everyone of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, devotees. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank, thank you, Mataji. Mataji, for hosting all of us. And thank you to all the devotees. Happy Ram Nami to everyone. Happy Thank Ram Nami. <laughs> Thank you. Ram Nami to everyone. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank, Thank you, you Sudha Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll end the call here. Thank you so much. Hare Thank Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.